Gun manufacturing workers of Reddit. What is it like going to work the days after a mass shooting? I was at a gun range some time ago speaking with the owner, and he said that after 9-11, ammunition sales went through the roof. What we need, he said, is another Y2K. Firearm sales were bananas then. Bring Obama back. That cat could sell some freaking ammo. I worked in sales in the US for a very large Italian gun manufacturer. Obviously everyone felt terrible for the victims and their loved ones, but it in no way affected how we felt about our jobs or what we were doing. Just like I don't think twice about getting in my car the day after a drunk driver killed someone on the highway. Why is everyone downvoting it and saying it's a stupid question? It's not. If someone works at a gun factory and says they feel okay because they support gun ownership or because law enforcement needs guns too, that's a legitimate answer. Or they might not feel okay because their product was used for murdering children. I would think you could find both of these people in a gun company. Just like someone who works for a tobacco company can say they feel okay, since smoking is a right of every adult, even though most people look down on it. It seems that Americans have been treating political debate like a sport, like the point is beating the other side. Your last sentence is too true. I used to be like that and became way happier once I realized what I was doing and stopped it. Hey, a question I'm 100% qualified to answer. It's a normal day. I make bits and pieces that end up what our government calls a firearm. Our name isn't on them as we are a contract manufacturer. We make parts that go on almost every AR-15 built from almost 20 major firearm core. After the Vegas shootings, the manufacturer of the bulk of those weapons had some press and a few protesters. They also are in the middle of nowhere so it's inconvenient as heck to protest there. I have many good friends at that plant. They weren't really affected in a major way. After the Pulse shooting, there was a decent amount of pushback at that company's factory. But they are a major player and it didn't really change much. I want to clarify something. No major firearm producer sells weapons direct to the public. There are extremely few exceptions to that. It's not like a brewery, making product and selling it on the same location. There never is a moment of oh, that gun I sold Tuesday was used illegally this weekend. It is mass production. Most companies have a minimum order of 5-10 firearms per shipment. Company X makes a gun and registers a serial number with the government. When company X gets an order for a gun from sporting store Y, SSY, they ship it to the store, along with digitally notifying the government, ATF, that the specific serial number is now being held and is the responsibility of SSY. From there, for the gun to be in the circulation Citizen Z must fill out a form, and in most cases a background check. SSY then then tells the ATF that they transferred the possession and ownership of the firearm with the specific serial number to Citizen Z after the appropriate forms and checks were done. I recently got a job at a gun manufacturer and although there hasn't been a mass shooting since I got the job, I'll give my input. Given the current political climate about guns, one thing you have to think about is how many guns are currently out there and how many are still being made today. Even though there are a crap ton of guns out there, it only takes one to do something as awful as a mass shooting which is just one of the realities of guns. When looking at who buys guns nowadays, it's really people who shoot for fun, hunters, law enforcement military, and people looking for a self-defense weapon. While a gun made over 20 years ago could have been used to kill however many people, we are trying to prevent that by giving guns to law enforcement who can use that to stop crap like that. Overall, it kinda sucks seeing a few of the millions of gun owners ruining gun ownership for everyone else because, honestly, guns are fun to shoot and hunting is enjoyable. Also venison is delicious. It is also comforting to know that if crap ever hits the fan for whatever reason, you have something to protect yourself. Similar, but not quite the right answer. I make knives for a living, and mass stabbings are frequent. It's a shame, but I don't feel anything. I also sell far more knives to the military, and genuinely good people. I'm well aware that my knives could and probably will kill someone at some point, and maybe by far each be used to kill someone who doesn't deserve it. But I also know I am putting a lot of tools into the hands of some good men protecting us, and that far outweighs the negative. Far more people are stabbed than shot, 
so I feel like this is a helpful answer. Another perspective would be that maybe you made the gun used in a mass shooting, but you also made the one that was in the hands of the officer that stopped him. The tools you make have a far greater chance of being used for good than evil. I am a small hobbyist blacksmith that makes hand forged knives for friends and for occasional sale. I feel the same way you do about it. It's a tool. Sure it can be used as a weapon, but so can a crowbar. FFL manufacturer here. Most people use guns for hunting, la, mill, safe queens, target shooting, self protection and will continue to want these tools for the job. A mass shooting is not going to change anything unless it really drives new litigation, which historically will increase gun sales temporarily. I read Miller's mother-in-law lol. If a man walked into a school tomorrow and killed 30 kids gun sales would skyrocket again. Mass shootings are always a mini boom for gun sales. Only because immediately after a mass shootings the people screaming for more gun control are the loudest and everyone wants to buy one before someone makes it illegal. Not a manufacturer, but I used to work for a big sporting camping etc store. Our weekly meeting would generally consist of management giving some weak condolences about the event, followed by being extremely excited about how we should expect a lot more in sales for handguns and ARs. And of course they would end by reminding us not to discuss anything remotely political with customers. Let's not forget that guns, knives, alcohol, cars, etc are inanimate objects with no sense of right or wrong and are in fact just tools, items, etc. These are not the issue. The issue arises when you put them in the hands of a human being. Inanimate objects, a large number of predominantly anti-gun folks I presume, simply don't grasp this. Because it's a highly emotional issue, mass murder is indeed a horrible thing. They can't differentiate between the crazed person and the tools. No amount of logic has any impact. I run two CNC machines that are used to make receivers for US AK-47 models. I've only started recently but our order list is in the 10,000s range. I know people will downvote the ARPS question, but this is genuinely an interesting question. I assume that life goes on and there are murmurs around the office just like any job, but that is about it. However, if there really is anything different in that person's day I am certainly interested in hearing about it. They make more money, it sucks but mass shootings are great for business. I mean, how does a kitchen knife maker feel when someone uses their knives to kill someone? How do chemists feel when someone suicides by overdosing? How do rope makers feel when someone hangs themselves or another person? How do potato sack makers feel when someone uses their sacks to drown innocent puppies kittens? Horrible people will do horrible things. The tools they use are just tools. The people who make those tools have nothing to do with it. The people who sell those things have nothing to do with it. You can't tell who is crazy all the time if it's not your profession or skill set. I'm not saying the question is invalid or anything. I'm just saying that it shouldn't be assumed that these people should feel guilty or bad about it. Guns are meant for protection, hunting, and war. They're not made for killing good people. But the same goes basabots and hammers. They're made and sold for specific purposes. When people do horrible things with them, it has nothing to do with those who sold it or made it. The only time it does is if the seller sold it illegally or without background checks etc. That person is crappy. I think both sides can agree that we need updated policies to prevent crazy people from having access to guns. However, the sad truth is that there's nothing you can do to stop horrible sane people from getting guns or finding alternate ways to hurt people. Just look at Chicago. No seriously. Ever since the freaking 1960s and earlier, they have only ever been less than a handful of weeks where where a shooting didn't happen. Every single week, multiple people are shot, usually killed. It makes big news when a shooting doesn't happen. I just turned 30 and I've only heard of this happening once and just assume there must have been some other weeks with no shootings. Go to YouTube and you'll find video interviews of Muhammad Ali talking about these shootings in Chicago, in the 70s. It sounds like he's talking about last week. Chicago has some of the strictest gun laws in America. I'm not saying everyone needs guns. I don't need one and likely won't ever get one. I'm just saying that no laws will ever make us safe, except maybe the laws of physics which still work against us sometimes. 
The question seems to imply that the people who make the guns are somehow responsible for mass shootings, but for every gun sold in the US, there are 10 that will never even be pointed at a person. Gun manufacturers don't need to ask why their customers want to use a gun in order to make them, just like Walgreens doesn't need to ask people why they're buying tiki torches. Like it or not, it's supply and demand. They'll make them as long as people buy them. There are several laws to prevent people who shouldn't have guns from getting them. But especially in the US, there are so many guns that some people are going to slip through the cracks. That's part of the price of the relative freedom that we have in the US. You might think that you'd be willing to sacrifice some of your freedom for security, but that isn't just up to you. That's up to the country as a whole. You might not feel safe, but that doesn't mean that you aren't safe. You can watch the news and see mass shooting after mass shooting, but the odds are still very low that it'll happen to you or someone you know. If you actually want to help prevent mass shootings, you yourself can do something that won't get voted away by someone who enjoys their second amendment freedom more than you do. The next time you see someone who appears to be on the fringes of society, barely able to keep themselves together, reach out to them and make them a positive part of your life. Don't ignore them, push them away, or tell yourself I don't want that sort of negativity in my life. Make them feel needed and wanted. People who feel needed and wanted don't try to kill people who haven't done anything to them. That's a tough question. I worked for the company that sold the rifle used in the Colorado movie theater shooting. My job was to sell firearms over the phone and answer technical questions on both guns and other products. The firearms would be shipped to one of our stores or to another FFL. I probably sold thousands of guns while I worked there. When I heard that we sold that particular rifle I was terrified I might have placed the order. Would I have been at fault? No, not really. But he would have still felt guilt. It ended up being a firearm sold directly from the retail store so I wasn't personally involved. I still support gun ownership. And I view most of these murders as a consequence of the killer's mental illness, not the tool they chose. But I'm also glad I did not have to be personally involved in the aftermath of a mass shooting. This is a comment that will likely go unnoticed or be buried anyway but if you're interested, RDGU is a sub for a lot of the shootings that have a semi-happier ending solely because of a good guy with a gun. Alternative yet identical question. Car manufacturers of Reddit. What is it like going to work the days after 100s of drunk drivers kill people? As an investor, I can tell you that gun companies do very well for themselves. You can see the spike in the value of their shares after a shooting. It's terrible, but it's definitely possible to make money by selling gun stocks after a shooting, waiting, buying, and then waiting for the next one to happen. Now, those investors are doing nothing to actually increase mass shootings. But it does seem dirty profiting off of them, at least in my opinion. Not trying to say I think anyone who invests in these companies is a bad person. More people die because of drunk driving accidents in a day than are killed by mass shootings in a year. Do you think alcohol or car manufacturers blame themselves every day? Car manufacturing workers of Reddit, what is it like going to work the days after a crowd ramming? This question and the title question are both equally ridiculous. Frustrating, because we make the very thing that would stop a mass shooting if people had them handy when the crazy commences. You heard the man, guns for every student. Nothing changes, the mentally unstable person has either been killed or arrested. What else is supposed to happen? Should they feel shame? It's like going back to work at a car factor after a multi-car pile up on the interstate. It's like remembering that the FBI reports tens of thousands of legitimate uses every year. It's like asking a journalist what it is like to go back to work when free speech makes the KKK and Alex Jones possible. No different than auto workers going to work the day after a car crash. It's not the gun's fault somebody was in butthole. Automotive factory workers of Reddit, what's it like going to work knowing your products kill dozens of Americans every single day? Stupid question. I worked in a gun shop, not a direct manufacturer. Anytime something happened, 7-8 years ago, we would have a quick meeting about events, then business as usual. The biggest change from normal is we'd get more visitors. 
This was usually in the form of news reporters wanting to do a story, more people wanting to protect their homes all of a sudden, or the rare group of your selling death. I'm not exactly fluent in gun laws here but I know it has to do with his being antique as they are all 19th century and a few are black powder. I know a guy who sells guns and ammo and other firearm stuff. He's Republican, but he can't help but wish Clinton was elected, because people would be buying more stuff out of fear of it being taken away. It's nice that a post about guns was diverted to an informative one about cars, that happens a lot, I wonder why, it's as though there's some sort of organized flowchart involved. It's mostly ignored taboo just sad to talk about, there may be a mention here or there about it, but it's a reality of the industry that this happens. People are respectful, say it's a shame, terrible, awful, usually want to know exactly what happened and what firearm was used as well. Was it a bump stock, modified receiver, 100 round drum, how many guns did he have, was it obtained illegally, phew, it was. Personally, I felt a lot of emotions in the moments after learning about one. It starts with anger at the psychopath that has committed the crime. Then turns to frustration that it didn't turn out another way, when so many law-abiding gun owners, enthusiasts, and sport shooters safely enjoy their hobby year-round. I've fired thousands and thousands of rounds safely without incident. Why did someone think that's okay to do? Also, sadness and guilt that something I helped design, build, and test was an accomplice to such a horrific act. I left the industry a few years ago for a variety of reasons. But mass shootings were always the worst part of the job. They were a cruel reminder of the truth that in the wrong hands, the tools you make can be used just as easily to perpetrate evil as they can to stop it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.